All right, time for some uh, cosmetic restoration repair. This is a very old boombox. This was probably from um, like 1974 to 80. Probably more at the upper scale of that age range. And it works perfectly, it just needs some cosmetic work. Unfortunately, I can't fix that, which actually happened in my ownership of it. I had it outside um, while I was painting something, and it fell over, and this was in a driveway, and it unfortunately got cracked right there. Um, so that really stunk. But anyways, this is actually a pretty good thing. Um, pretty good little boombox. You have two microphones, and it records in stereo, and it sounds really good when it records. Um, it doesn't sound all weird. Got that kind of ugly antenna, which I'm going to try to fix in this video. Um, but I put that on there because, well, the old antenna was completely snapped in half. That's how I bought it. And, I mean, that got the job done, but it's pretty ugly. Uh... Got a nice little handle there. It's being blocked by this. Uh, we have all the screws taken out of the back, so we can just easily pop it right open. I have the power supply um, disconnected from the board. It's got a, kind of a neat little socket thing. So let's clean it up. Okay, we got the back off. Uh, so, let's see what we got here. This is what I had that rabbit ear thing connected to. Everything in here is in sockets, which is nice. Well, not everything, because most of the ICs aren't. Uh, and basically all the wires aren't, except for stuff like this. But the fact that it is... Um, Kinda like that in some areas is nice for uh, repair. That's the power input right there. So I don't really think I need to focus basically at all on the electronics. Everything in that area seems to be pretty good. What I'm mainly focusing on is the case uh, because it's kind of dirty. It's got like 40, 45 years worth of junk all over it. Um, probably more like 40. And I don't see any date codes on the ICs at all. I don't see any date codes on the ICs, but I do see Panasonic on there. And I don't think that that 7115 is, a set, is the 15th week of 71. <laughs> it's a bit too early for something like that. Uh, but looking up top, everything's coated in dust. So if I can take this whole mechanism out, which it looks like there's these right here, these screws, and this whole thing should just slide out, um, then we'd be golden, because I could take all the knobs and switches off and then spray the case down with no electronics and assemble it all back together after letting it air dry for a while. All right, just a matter of the speakers. Wow, this is like the first time this has been apart. There's still that tar stuff holding the speaker to the plastic. It's pretty impressive. It's a good thing though because that means that it's pretty untouched. Alright. Got this out of the way. I have the speakers in their right places which will help me put them back in the right places when this gets all put back together. Uh, another thing that I should probably finish is or work on is this right here. I don't know what I'm gonna do about that. I think that it's always kind of been like that uh, because uh, looks like they didn't. It looks like they might have made this too long or something. It can't sit flat, but I feel like it, if it's like that, then it will be better if it's like that because it's always kind of annoyed me. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna do that too. So now that you can get a better look at this. Not including the knobs and buttons and switches. You can see that there's a lot that needs to be cleaned. So, let's get soaking. 
All right, I gave it a good bath in the sink. It's looking a bit better now. Still got to get into those tiny little cracks and crevices, but it really won't be too hard. Uh, but first, let me dry it off real quick. Well, you know what they say about rust? That you can spray the rust off, but it'll come back right when you put it in the shed? Uh, well, I think the same goes for dust, too, because I'm going to have to let this thing soak. But the problem is, I don't think I have a thing big enough that this can soak in, aside from a bathtub, which is very inconvenient for the rest of the people, my family other people in this house but uh, maybe I can dig around and find something all right both the knobs and the case have soaked for a while knobs turned out really good and I, it doesn't look as bad on camera but they've almost become like kind of a brown or green colored and I wonder if that's from cigarette or something. I got this for free at a garage sale. It was marked as two dollars, but it, I bundled it with something um, that my mom wanted, and it, this became free. Uh, so, yeah, those look way better than before. Uh, but. Yeah, I'm gonna see if I can do something about like that right there. It looks like you can just scrape that off with a more abrasive brush or something. And I still gotta get down into those deep cracks and crevices. But for the most part up here, it looks really good. It's gonna be a little hard to catch, but let's see if I can get focus on that. Looks better, but not perfect. I used Windex on this. And I feel like ideally I'd want to replace this piece of glass. Now if I had an acrylic cutter I'd just cut a piece of acrylic uh, model one and then cut it and put it in there but I don't have one of those because I am not rich so I don't know maybe when the school reopens since they have one all right, I windexed the whole thing, uh, scrubbed it, and washed it down on the speaker grills, mainly. Um, but as you can see, there's none of that weird stuff. I mean, there's a little left right there. But whatever is on there is on there and was on there really, really good. I don't know if it was food or some kind of like soda or something, but it was it was on there. Uh, I'll be the first to tell you that. Uh, I really don't have a lot of hope for this dial thing right here, the dial glass in this corner over here. It's kind of rough and weird. Uh, but, I mean, what are you going to do? It's like 40 years old. Uh, but I think I'm going to focus on that right there, and then I'll put it back together. Wow. Wow. A little Windex, a little Windex on that makes it look new. And don't mind the color varying right there; it's just moisture um, from water and stuff. But wow! And I just sprayed that with Windex and wiped it down um, very lightly with a rag, and it cleaned up really nicely. So I didn't even try to get in the little grooves, which I'll try to do in a sec right now. But wow, I guess the Apic guy teaches you something, huh? Well, huh. Never mind on the issue of whatever is on that stuff. I guess Windex didn't help it after all. I wonder what that stuff is. Well, it used Motorola transistors. They are all Motorola's, except for one Delco right there. It's kind of odd. They're all Motorola's except for, and then also except for these ICs. But I don't know who makes those, it kind of looks like Motorola. 
judging by the print, because Intellivisions were made by General Instruments, which is Motorola, and the chips in my Intellivision kind of have that style of font and writing on them. So I bet those are Motorola too. Hmm. Neat. Alright, these buttons don't necessarily go in a specific way, but I'm going to put them in a specific way due to wear. I feel like it would be kind of strange if that button right there with all that wear was on the record button and the play button was like that one right there. It's hardly worn down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set th this one as play. Uh, this one maybe as stop. This one as eject. And then these three look basically brand new, so it doesn't really matter. Rewind, fast forward, and record. So, yeah. Just something that would bother me <laughs> if they were put on all weird and stuff, and I were to notice that and kind of make me itch my head a little bit. Looking good, huh? Especially when you look up here. Now watch this. Looking bad, huh? Especially this. Hmm. <laughs> you like what I did there? Anyways, I already know that this works, but I'm just going to plug it in to show you guys. Told you it worked. I don't want to get a copyright strike, uh, but tape deck works too. Works really good. Fast forward. Rewind. Stop. But it's kind of funny. That's supposed to be a battery meter when it's on tape mode. But I have it plugged into the wall and that's what it's showing. So maybe it's the milliamps that it's drawing from the wall or something. I, I don't know. Um. Ooh, the YouTubers like this one. Uh-oh. Come on. The reset button is Twink Twangler. YouTubers like that one. Uh, but anyways. So I can take the lazy way out and try to adjust it with a screwdriver. I don't... Ah, oh, dang it. There we go. The stereo accent. Too, which I guess doesn't do much on a mono recording, but... With stereo accent, it seems to have a wider range of sound. Um, where if stereo accent isn't on, it seems to be uh, more direct at you. And I brought this to a gym once, a school gym, uh, when the school was closed, like after hours, uh, and I noticed that when stereo accent was on, the sound wouldn't travel far at all. And then when I turned stereo accent off, because I was wondering what the heck was wrong with this thing, uh, just flipping switches around, I noticed, whoa, the sound doesn't really dissolve as it does with stereo accent on. So something weird is going on in there. Um... It's doing probably what it's supposed to be doing, but yeah, for a wide range, stereo accent off, but for everything else, it's on, and I always use stereo accent. It just sounds better. But anyways, I think that was a decent cosmetic repair of this unit. It was rough before, so thank you for watching.